everyone it's Cindy welcome back to Studio Lou so I'm just puttering around today I'm honestly thinking of just cons <laughs> calling this series like you know puttering around or like pocket full of scraps or something because I'm just making ephemera um, from my uh, book that I recently broke down and then just other things that I've kind of pulled out of like my Tuesday 10 bin that I do my Tuesday 10 videos with and then I just want to start like working with handfuls of my scraps from my scrap bin which is a little out of control so let me grab 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 a handful like here's just a big handful of scraps from my scrap bin um there we go okay so I am starting here with this is actually scrap digital from shabby dabby doo -dah. I um I love the colors of this and I have this little Tim Holtz girl that I think is super cute so I just want to have her there now she's kind of leaning on something so we might have to play with that a bit um but yeah I just want to do some collaging with bits and bobs I'm having a super busy day but decided I would like I wanted to do a little bit of like playing around working and I figured I might as well turn on my camera why not I'd be happy to hang out and you guys can watch whatever calamities happen here <laughs> um but yeah it's been a very busy day for me my work is so busy but that's like nothing new um what else exciting do i have to talk about <laughs> not a whole lot i've just been you know doing my typical like stuff making journals that's always fun and um, I've also been thinking about um, spinning a bit of yarn maybe this weekend if I have time but it is Mother's Day and we're gonna have my family visiting um, so I gotta get going on that and I need to answer emails I've got like loads of stuff happening that I need to get to okay but yeah, I was having a really funny dream this morning that gave me an idea <clears throat> about, um, so I was thinking like before I went to bed, I got some really nice comments and reviews on my Etsy and just like, I get the nicest things from people and I feel like really, um, you know, just fortunate that people are like so nice to me, um, online. It's really great and so thank you for that for those of you who watch these videos and hang out with me and I, I really appreciate you um so I I was thinking I had this dream about like because I have some you know repeat customers who who purchase my journals and, and that's always wonderful to feel like you can you know appeal to people and um I was having a dream about like this challenge or this collaboration that was going on on YouTube where people were doing like a show my shelves kind of video and it was like showing the shelves of all of their um their journals and they were doing like little flip throughs with like what they put in their journals like just quick ones without showing like private details and I was like man I hope that becomes a real thing and yes I do apparently dream about journaling at this point uh, <laughs> but I know that some people have made videos like this like I know April um, from Pink Oddbird who is an amazing journal maker and creator. Um, she has done a video like showing her journal stash and I really enjoyed that. I need to glue this little person down and then decide what the parameters of this, this piece of ephemera are going to be. I think it's going to be a tag actually. I'll show you what I made this morning um, early as I was playing around in here and I didn't turn the camera on because I was hanging out with my daughter and we were my daughter is completely obsessed right now with the megalodon <laughs> um so she's been watching lots of like youtube videos on megalodons and oh my gosh she's really into megalodons so i couldn't film this morning because we were taking in some megalodon <laughs> uh information so <clears throat> There we go, we'll put you there. Then let's figure out what the parameters of this will be. So I need to also glue together this backing here. 
Oh, I also made this morning. Um, where did I put it? I made a new journal cover. That, well, I started it yesterday, but I got it, I think, mostly done this morning. I'll show it to you. <clears throat> so I'm, I've got like three or four projects on the go right now. I don't know when I'll get to this one, but it's one that I'm working on. So this was super hard to make. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I made it. Okay, so I'm still on the, my adventures in like working with vintage like saved baby clothes that I have saved in my stash of fabric for some time, including this lovely little baby sweater. Now I knit about a million garments for my children when they were babies. Um, this one, I won't lie though, I didn't knit this one. This one was um, definitely like a thrifted sweater from, um, I think I got it at an antique store. Like you know how some antique booths, they will have like, you know, vintage kids clothes and little mitts and things. So I really loved it because my daughter has B is one of her names. Um, and so I got it for her, but it was itty bitty and she's grown out of it, but I wanted to keep it because I thought it was just really pretty. So oh, let me tell you, this was, this was science here. So for those of you who knit or crochet, you may be familiar with the term steaking. So what steaking is, it's one of the scariest thing in the fiber arts world. So, um, or in the knitting world specifically. So when you knit, you know, everything, all those stitches are connected. And if you're to cut into that, the whole thing can unravel. But, you know, there's this whole thing about knitting where, you know, you've created a shape and, and you've knit together stitches, you know, like this. And sometimes you need them to come apart like that. And the example I'll give you is a cardigan sweater, right? So let's think about Mr. Rogers and his cardigan sweater we'll draw this like this you know you've got you've got a normal sweater sorry for the terrible drawing but then you know you want to bring a line here with buttons or a zipper so sometimes you want to knit this from the neck down you want to knit 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 the whole thing you don't want to have to like knit stop turn go back knit stop turn go back because that can take a little longer people have different preferences so then in comes steak, steaking. And what steaking is, is where you get really brave and you're going to sew a line of stitches here and a line of stitches here to prevent that unraveling. Then you're going to take some scissors and you're going to get brave and you're going to cut right down that middle and you're going to turn that in, stitch it again, and you've created this beautiful, um, you know, seam that you can then add buttonholes or you can, um, you may have already stitched the buttonholes in fact, or you may add a zipper, etc. So I had to do a bit of that. So I cut the sweater apart. Then I had to take these pieces and I, I didn't want to either hand stitch them with thread or do a knitting like invisible kind of mending technique. I wanted to use my sewing machine because I knew this was going on fabric. Um, and I wanted the process to be a little quicker. So what I had to do was complicated to do that because when I went to take just this piece of knitted garment and put it into the sewing machine, it wanted to stretch out. It didn't want to stay in a shape, right? It wanted to kind of go all over the place. So what I ended up doing was I actually glued it to a piece of paper that would control the shape that this took on and wouldn't allow it to just stretch out on its own. So I actually allowed it to dry as well because I'm trying to glue up my machine a little bit less than I have been doing because it can make things kind of chug along until you clean your machine. Um, <clears throat> so I had to do that for three sections, this one, this one, this one. So those were pieces of paper, stitched this on, then, you know, I then glued with Fabri-Tac the pieces onto this whole cover, which is made from paper envelopes, um, mailing like large mailers. And um, then I was like, okay, we've, we've taken care of the inner stitch. This won't unravel. Now we need to like, you know, turn this into a freeform quilt like I do. So um, I got the knitted pieces on and I added, this is a beautiful, this is an antique baby jumper. It's actually a swimsuit. But back in that time, swimsuits were constructed of cloth, not of like the elasticy nylon material that we know today. Um, so 
This has never been worn. This is actually an antique piece and you'll see it's got some natural yellowing to it. I, I never, I never, um, touched it. It was just too pretty. I wanted to keep it as is. And when I got it, my daughter was already a little too big for it. So she never got to wear it, but I kept it because I am a little hobgoblin of things. So, um, this is a good use for it. The embroidery is beautiful. It is hand embroidered. And um, so yeah, I added that on there. And then I had this little, this adorable little dress that had that little kind of, you know, I think you see it a lot like in Dutch clothing, like older, you know, um, like even German clothing like Lederhosen where it would have like two kind of lines, bows, and then something going on down here like, you know, little little belts or something. So this was a dress in that same style that had these tiny roses on it. I used some of this in my little roses journal as well. And then I had this piece left over and I really wanted to use it. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to put it on here because the colors went well. And then I just covered over the seams with some of this beautiful bluey green batik because I wanted a little color pop. And then I decided, because I've been super inspired by this book, you know, with the little random button stitching that she does. I mean, I've done that before myself. I made a journal called Pink Buttons that had lots of buttons on it, but, um, yeah, I was reinvigorated to put little buttons on there from the Daydream Journals book. So I did a little cluster of just simple little buttons there beside this bee. And then I found um, the fabric for the inside cover, which is this beautiful leafy fabric. It totally reminds me of the Golden Girls, like the bedspread in the wall that Blanche had. So iconic, right? So when I found this fabric, I knew like I needed it and it felt good to put it in here. So <clears throat> the way that this journal is going to work, I think, um, if I am, yeah, I'm upside down. So this, let's pretend that this is like the journal, the first journal, cause I'm doing these two spine, like I'm doing one spine here and one spine here and it's gonna be a roll up. Um, I'm really enjoying these right now. So um, this will be journal one. So that's what cover y'all get there. This will fold, journal two will be here. And then this will fold again. So that'll be the outside of this journal. Um, and then it will fold over like that. So this will be the actual visible back. Then you'll have this flap that will come up here and this will be the front of the journal. And so you'll get like a little peek of these, these here. I'm going to connect a tie probably here and possibly possibly two ties so that I'll have, you know, something to tie around. So yeah, that's going to be a really fun book, but it's going to take some time. I'm not going to lie. I have not started the signatures for it yet. I am getting started with the book, um, that I most recently broke down the Victorian Rose Garden book. So I'm using things from that to make ephemera for this book, as well as what I'm doing now in the scraps and my current stash of things that I have from Mass Make March, which believe it or not, I am getting like pretty like through those. Like I, I thought they would last a lot longer than what they have and they are not lasting. <laughs> so if anything, it does show you that I'm using stuff that I'm not like hoarding things, right? <laughs> not that I'm sure you're tracking me or anything, but I'm tracking myself. I have to keep an eye on myself. So that's what I worked on this morning. And then I did make a little bit of ephemera, which I should probably put in the box. Um, so from the roses book, this, I want to stitch around it probably though. Um, we'll see. Then I made this little pocket. And then this little pocket, it's a little tab um, card. And then I made a little envelope and it's got this really sweet little verse. Passed like music through my brain, night interpreted to me all its grace and mystery. And another little pocket. And then this um, is a postcard from the back of this really cool Dutch uh, magazine that I have called Fleur. I have a few of them. I'm almost out of them because I've I've used most of them up. So yeah, that's what I've been up to. Um, I think I can't cut that on there until I cut it out of here because I've got it on there crooked. Yeah, so busy, busy. And then today my daughter has skating and I'm 
going to change up our routine a little bit. She usually wears her snow. They have to wear like snow pants, protective pants and jacket because they're on the ice. And um, she's been wearing like her snowsuit, like her winter snowsuit. But I think I'm going to, I just got her these great rain pants and another little kind of lighter jacket and it'll be warm enough for skating but i want it to be a little less um bulky because i want to put knee pads on her she like these kids i don't know like i am so stressed out about these skating lessons and to please tell me if you think i'm being a completely extra parent because i'm not trying to be but like I just get these anxieties so you know my biggest fear about my kid skating is that like her fingers are going to get under the skates of another kid and get lopped off <laughs> like or, or hurt in some way okay but my worst nightmare is that they get lopped off <laughs> so maybe I watched too many like you know movies that were like the Christmas story when I was a kid but like this is what I think about right I'm always worrying about the most dramatic things so my idea is I want to put knee pads on her because last the last time she went to skating um she she fell and I mean she was almost crying like she really hurt her knee and I came rushing down from the stands but like then she was like no no I'm okay like I'll keep going and I'm like okay you don't have to you know like I uh, try not to get stressed out about it but she she kept going but she had a very very black knee like so I, I want to try to prevent that because that's going to you know suck the joy out of this whole skating thing and I don't want that for her so today we will do knee pads definitely and so what I was saying about like you know fingers getting lopped off so like a couple weeks ago we went to skating and the instructor is like this teenage guy who seems by all accounts to be lovely have no complaints really except well, I have a couple complaints but um he's he, he's a lovely person and I'm sure that some of this is just me like reacting to something I don't need to and I need to just chill about it so <laughs> um he was getting them to jump okay on skates like jump and, and land just jump up in the air small little jump and land but like these are all kids between the ages of four and seven and so you know they're not particularly coordinated and they're all standing super close together and some of them are falling while the others are still jumping and I'm just like sitting there watching my daughter's fingers the whole time like I've told her keep your hands away from the skates of other kids because like I don't want that to happen and I don't think anyone's thinking about it and maybe that's because I'm way too worried <laughs> I don't know but I don't want that to happen and so you know I remember when I was a kid like skating was uh you know we we were kind of given like safety when we were doing it before we did it like I learned to skate from my parents on a lake so not in such a controlled environment um with other kids or anything but I mean the, and that has benefits and drawbacks of its own of course um but like I don't know they seem very lax on safety I haven't seen them talk to the kids about safety at all um maybe because they're too young but I don't know I've told my daughter a few things like try to leave space between you and the other kids try to keep your hands away from everybody else's feet and try not to like land on your skates like they're they are showing them how to fall properly like you know if you feel like you're gonna fall do this and and that's good um you know so they don't like fall on their skate and hurt their bottom or something um or cut themselves a little like I have seen a little bit of that and they show them how to get up which I never learned it's really cool actually you just like if you fall you get yourself into a position where um you're like on um you know you bring your one knee up like you know like pretend you're proposing or something right a proposal kind of down on one knee and then you put both of your hands on that knee and push yourself up and keep your body straight and that like leverages you to get up like I had no clue but it's really good like I'm seeing little kids you know totally unsteady on their skates and up they go like I've got to say I do really see the progress that she's made um from the first week um 
<laughs> where she was just falling constantly because it was her first time on skates and it was to the point where this one lady like she didn't know that I was the mom she goes well at least she's you know she's confident and <laughs> I was just sitting there like, oh gosh, like, you know, and it's true. She just kept getting back up because she's like that, right? But yeah, but now she's good. She's on her feet. She's not falling and I'm feeling good about it. But I still want to do the the uh, knee pads thing because she's got those anyways for her skateboarding and uh, scooting and all that. So it'll be good to uh, keep her a little more unbruised. I always say to my my doctor like whenever I take my kids to the doctor I say like I promise I didn't give them any of these bruises <laughs> and she just laughs at me and she's like oh my kid looks the same don't even worry about it it's like every time they bruise themselves I'm like guys you're covered in bruises stressing me out <laughs> but they just kind of laugh at me and they know like I'm their mom and I worry about them all the time it's my job so I don't know parenting is like one of those things and I know I talk about it a lot here but it's because it's like a huge gigantic part of my whole life right and yeah for my child free friends I'm sorry I love you and I know you're probably like yes we know Cindy you have kids <laughs> but yeah it's it's a big thing and um it's tough like when you like see them get hurt and stuff it's not fun I mean, I think I've always felt that way, but there's a certain, uh, a certain thing that changes, I think, like when you become a parent, there's just something different that I never felt before I had kids, but hmm, if she waited long enough, sometimes I laugh at the, the snips that I keep here. That I cut out of books. If she waited long enough, what was going to happen? I guess I wanted to tell a story there. Oh, actually, I'm going to use this one. You cannot pluck roses without the fear of thorns. That's great. Maybe that's a good um, that's a good mantra on parenting, even. <laughs> You can't have kids without having relatively frequent nervous breakdowns. <laughs> mm. But yeah, we went to her little, her Sparks group last night and she made me a lovely Mother's Day card, which I um, have around here somewhere. And they made little campfires out of marshmallows and pretzels, like little edible campfires. And that was kind of cute. <laughs> There we go. That's sweet. So we'll stitch this one. Um, I'm not going to put anything maybe on the top of that one. I don't know. Let me check. This looks pretty cute with this actually with the little red flowers. But I don't know. Hmm. I like the colors, but maybe if I made it a bit smaller, that would be nicer. Oh yeah, I like that. Okay, so we'll stitch those. Okay. And I want to make a belly band with this bird from my scraps. This was from a book called The Lonely Squirrel. And it had really beautiful um, images in it. I'm just going to glue it down to book page because it's going to be a belly band. So you won't see the back of it. And I just want to give it a little more strength. And tomorrow my daughter has nature school, which we're looking forward to. I love taking her to nature school. I love nature school as a whole concept and I just want to stay there all day with her so I can be in nature school too. Her instructor is this lovely woman that I can't even explain it, but she just has this presence about her that makes you feel so comfortable and welcome and like connected to like the nature around you. Like there's just, you know, she's very perfect for that that job and uh I like her we had a really nice kind of like you know when you just feel like you click with someone like I feel like I clicked with her she's really nice 
so yeah my daughter loves it loves her and there's another um, like a more junior kind of leader and she's really lovely too she's the most quiet person and she's so sweet and uh, my daughter really likes her and she's also made a very sweet little friend um, and they're having a nice time together and it's so funny to listen like to how other children like they really teach your kids something like so this little girl must be very much into um kind of like imagining like quests like medieval kind of quests and things because that's what they were imagining like when I got there last the last time and they were standing on this mound and all I hear is like my child saying like um you know guard the castle my my queen until I return from my quest and like they're having this whole like medieval kind of conversation that I've never heard my daughter say any of the words I heard her saying and it was like so she's totally picked it up from this other kid which is really cool maybe we'll back that with that that might be fun son is doing something crazy upstairs <laughs> he is like my son has gotten a really um he wants to play this game called song quiz it's like a google i think it's like a google game by this app creator called like face off or something so you know he's only three and he doesn't actually know the songs but he wants us to play it constantly so like what it is is like you you basically hear like a snippet of a song and then you have to guess the, the artist's name and title and you can pick like the the um the music like decade and so we've been playing a lot of that lately in the car <laughs> And he's just like, song quiz, play song quiz, play song quiz. And we're like, okay. <laughs> and I think my husband and I are both like very tired of this game. <laughs> but what you do for love. Okay, now I'm just going to use up this leftover Tim Holtz packaging as my background. And that'll be my backing because it's kind of fun. I apparently have some nice vellum music here. Let me go glue that on as more background. I have to find what my focal point will be here. Butterflies are cute. We could fussy cut those. That's nice too. That's from a greeting card. Hmm. Lots of randomness in these scraps, that's for sure. Oh, a frog. I should keep that for my for a project I have. I'll set that aside. And then maybe I'll look over here for a focal point. But let me see. Okay. This is the basket I've got together for these journals. So I have a few signatures, like, or two really, um, but they're not like decided upon yet. So just put them down there. And then I've retained a little bit of fabric and bits and bobs that I might use later. Um, plunk those down there too. Okay. What's the shape of this thing? It's like a square. Years of dreaming. Bears. Hmm. Maybe I don't really have any focal points in here. I think this is mainly like background type pages. Let's see if there's anything in here. Oops. Hmm. Just pick this up. 
up and then I can quickly flip through. Oh yeah, those guys. I love these guys. Too big, I think. I don't want to have to fussy cut them. I like the background that they're on already. I have these leaves. Hmm. Maybe I'll put that leaf on there. I guess I could use like a Tim Holtz person or I could cut something else out. and I have this I'm thinking about maybe I'm just gonna just maybe tear this because it's got like a torn a faux torn edge to begin with This one I actually should fussy cut because it's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Then I also have to, today I need to figure out, I'm changing my garden plans. Um, the way that my garden is laid out, I'm going to put new walls up because the wooden walls that we have are, they're worn out. They've had a few years of being there and I knew I wouldn't get a long time out of wood because it's wood, right? And it gets wet, but they've been um, pretty good um, actually as the walls to the garden and they're not even ready to be completely retired. I'm just going to choose to retire them. So I saw this really cool video. This guy was building a retaining wall because he lived near water and they were having like flood type conditions. So what he did is he just literally bought bags of quick crete and he stacked them up on top of each other and built a literal retaining wall out of them. And then he just let the rain set them. And I'm thinking a little bit about like what I want to do is I have two raised garden beds and I want to actually bring them a little lower to the ground because I think they they as they are they are uh, attracting too many critters um, and I don't want to attract critters that may burrow into my garden bed so I live in an urban environment which means um, you know we get critters that come from places like that used to be the woods and used to be farmland but are being turned into unfortunately housing and it's not so great for the environment so we we definitely get visitors like rats from and we get visitors like raccoons like I, I don't really have an issue I know there's a huge stigma about rats but I'm telling you no matter where you live they are there they are definitely there um so we just want to not let them get too attracted to us. We don't like see very many of them, um, but we have seen them before. So um, we are pretty cautious about that because, you know, anything that's like the, the chewers of things, we don't want them around and like, you know, because they can, they can cause damage. So we, oops, hold on. Sorry about that. That was just a test of the emergency alert system. So not to be alarmed. <laughs> oh my gosh um yeah we get obviously amber alerts and things like that and i always stop whatever i'm doing to look at those alerts because you know that's what they're there for so i don't remember what i was saying <laughs> but that's okay oh yeah we don't want to attract mice and rats and, and such of the chewing 
the chewing persuasion. So I'm thinking about doing this whole quick crete thing and not building it like wide, but building it like I'll put the bag in sideways into a trench and I'm going to like build sort of a structure around it. And I'm not going to wait for rain. I'm actually going to hose it in there, but I've got to think about it and look at the sides of the bags and see if that's what would work. Like I would like to get cedar or something, but like the cost of cedar right now is just, ugh, I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't allow myself to do that. Okay, I think I like that and then I will stitch it. Um, let's see if I can find a, a word snippet because I just think it would be cute. What's this say? This is about frogs. I, you know, I need to like get this frog project done that I have been working on for a while. Leafless trees rose up. Smell of flowers on the good brown earth. I'm going to go with leafless trees rose up. Because that's kind of fun. I may add it on a snippet of book spine. Oh my goodness, my kids are playing upstairs and they're so loud. Little turkeys. The dog is like running around with them. <laughs> Enough. Do I want to keep that there? Maybe my greeting. Yeah, let's keep that there. Okay, there we go. All right, so that I think is a video for now for today. I'm going to go wrangle my kids and see what's going on and then um, finish up my lunch hour and get back to work. And I will talk to you all again very soon. I hope you're all doing really well and you're getting some nice spring weather coming your way. And for now, that's everyone thing. That's everyone. That's everything. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.